your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken, brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Boom, doodle doo boom, doodle doo boom. There it is, Mama, right there on the bend of the road, Jared Tucker's house. He didn't know what he let himself in, in for, having you two as neighbors. And boarding our cat and dog in the bargain. Hey, I don't see any sign of bluff, do you? Nary a sign. Jared probably has him out back somewhere. Do you see Shakespeare? If I can't see a great Dane, how can I possibly see a cat? Do you think he'll know us? He'll know you, but there's a serious question whether he'll be on speaking terms with you. Oh. Anybody who'd run off to New York and leave a Great Dane with strangers for five days doesn't deserve to be spoken to by the Great Dane. Well, Jared Tucker is no stranger. No stranger than what? Oh, that's terrible. Such a pun. (laughs) Here's the house. Not one cat, not one dog. I don't even see Mr. Tucker. I'll Uh, get out and look for him, shall I? I'll, I'll go with you. I do not volunteer. Howdy, folks. Glad to see you, glad to see you. Hello, Mr. Tucker. Mr. Tucker? We're back. Glad to see you, mighty glad to see you. We certainly appreciate you taking care of Bluff and Shakespeare for us, Mr. Tucker. I hope there haven't been too much trouble for you. Trouble? Did you say trouble? There ain't been no trouble, hardly. Uh, where'd you get the idea there was any trouble? Are they all right? Cat's fine, tip top. Here he is, fine. And Bluff, how's he? Bluff, uh... Is that what you call a dog, hey? Yeah, we told you before we left. David, didn't we tell Mr. Tucker Bluff's name? Well, yes, we told him Bluff's name was Bluff. Mm. Bluff, hey? Dang name slipped my mind. Might have helped some if I'd have remembered it. Well, how is he? Tell us, Mr. Tucker. Oh, it's, uh, it's this here Bluff you're talking about now. Yes, of course it is. How is Bluff? Well, there ain't no reason why he shouldn't be fine, too. Nope, no reason at all. Oh, that's wonderful. Nope, there ain't no reason at all why that dog shouldn't be just fine. Just fine and dandy. Well, nothing's wrong, is it, Mr. Tucker? Wrong? No, indeedy, nothing's wrong. (sighs) What makes you think there's anything wrong? You folks just uh, hold your horses a minute and stop rushing me and I'll get the cat. Say, that's funny. Mr. Tucker looks as though he's limping. Mm Mm-hmm. Do you think he's going to be as glad to see us as we are to see him, David? He'll be overjoyed. Mama likes to pretend that she doesn't love Bluff. I suspect she's a bigger Bluff than Bluff is. (laughs) You suspect wrong. Here comes Jared Tucker. With Shakespeare. Oh, Shakespeare, you sweet old thing. Well, folks, here's your little cat. You give him right to me, Mr. Tucker. I'll take him on my lap. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. And now, Bluff? Uh, Where is he, Mr. Tucker? Bluff? Uh, That's that dog of yours. Well, well, you don't have to get him yourself. Uh, You look all tuckered out, Mr. Tucker. Just, uh, (laughs) Just tell me where you've got Bluff tied, and I'll get him myself. Thank you, son. I got this here limp, you see. Yes, I know. Oh, I hope it's not anything serious. Oh, nothing serious at all, Mrs. Norton. At least, ways I hope it ain't serious. Just uh, favoring my right foot some. Seems to have twisted my ankle today. Then you stay right here, Mr. Tucker, and I'll get Bluff. You will not get him. I'll get him. I would have got him, only my ankle, Uh, you know. Twisted ankle can be very painful. How did it happen, Mr. Tucker? Oh, for nothing at all. I got to climb in the wall in back of the apple grove, back of the house. Course, as soon as it happened, Delilah, my sister, she tells me I hadn't ought to have been a climbing the wall in the first place. That's woman for you. Thinks a man gets to an age when he don't know how to climb a wall. The fact remains that you did twist your ankle. Uh, why were you climbing the wall, Mr. Tucker? For the same reason a chicken crosses a road. <laughs> <laughs> Get to the other side, young feller. <laughs> Twisted her as neat as you'd twist a gooseberry off its stem, did you? Well, your foot's not quite off its stem yet. You still seem to have it. Well, of course, it couldn't be more useless if I hadn't got it. Pain so much. But uh, that's not the answer to why I was climbing the wall. I was climbing to get my shovel, which I'd left down in Apple Orchard. If I hadn't had my hands so full of dog, I'd have brought the shovel back with me in the what first place. What was Bluff doing in the orchard? That's what I was getting to, if you'd stop interrupting well, me. we're not interrupting you, Mr. Tucker. You interrupted me right then. Well, I... You women get shows you don't know whether you're interrupting a man or not. As I was about to say, when that young Baldwin tree I set out there two years ago got thrown down... Blown down? Was there a windstorm here while we were in New York? I said thrown down, not blown down. Oh. Oh, I don't know. A hurricane could have done more damage than that there dog of yours. You mean Bluff threw down your apple tree? With malice of forethought. <clears throat> now, let me get this straight, Mr. Wasn't Tuck. anything straight about it. It was all in a heap it was. 
The dog and his chain twisted and snagged and snarled into it. Oh, you mean you tied him to the apple tree? Don't mean anything of the sort. I tied him to the range house I got for the chickens up on the other side of the barn. I, I, I don't think I follow you. I ain't hard to follow, but you should have been here to follow that dog. Uh, well, let's uh, go back well, to there's, the beginning. There's yes. no sense of going all the way back to the beginning. The real rip snorting only commenced when I hitched him to the chicken and house. And then what happened? What happened shouldn't happen to a chicken house. But what happened? They took off. What took off, Mr. Tucker? The dog in the chicken house. The chicken house didn't go so far as the dog. The, the chain broke. I am beginning uh, to see the light. I'm confused. Well, I don't see the connection between all this and your ankle, Mr. Tur- Tucker. There was plenty of connection. Altogether too much connection. You see... When I caught up with the dog, he was over across the wall in Apple Orchard. Mm-hmm. So I tied him to that young Baldwin tree. Everything is becoming very clear and, to and, me And now. then then what happened? Well, I had to hurry back to catch all the hens that were running around loose. The hen house being off its foundations, they took it into their heads to go places. Chickens is crazier than some people. And uh, after you had corralled the hens... You... Well, that took quite a spell. After that, I went back to... See, to the dog. And, and and then? Well, that brings us right to where we were when you interrupted me. Hmm. The tree was thrown over, and the dog, and the chain, and the tree was snarled and snaggled and trussed sweeter than you ever seen a hawk tongue. And, and, and? Yes, well, that's where I made my mistake. I unhitched the dog. If I'd left him in the fix he got himself in, I wouldn't be in the fix I got myself in. Mr. Tucker, are you sure Bluff is all right? Is the dog all right? Is the dog all right? Who says anything about the dog not being all right? Well, why shouldn't he be all right? You know what comes from always looking on the dark side of things? What? You stop saying what and let Mr. Tucker get on. Well, well I, I didn't I... get fur. Well, we haven't got to the shovel and the ankle yet, Mr. Well, Tucker. they're coming. I got the dog back, and this time I tied him to the house, figuring that he'd find that was too much to pull down. That's, that's what I figured. That's what you figured? Yes, I figured it that way. Oh. David, I'm beginning to figure. Well, don't. Well, then when I got the shovel so as I could set the apple tree back into the ground, and I just got her planted when there was a hoot and a holler from my sister Delilah up there to the house. So, I come a-running. That was when the ankle twisted. Nope, son. The, the ankle, the ankle, the ankle comes later. Well, let's get back to the house and Delilah's... Hoot and holler. Well, we're back to the house, and there's a hoot and holler laying in front of you. We're getting close. Well, Mr. Tucker, your your porch railing is lying flat on the lawn. Yep, there she is. But that ain't all of it. You mean there's more to the story? More to the story and more to the rail. The big corner post be the stairs, like the one that's still standing there. That's the one that ain't. You mean Bluff pulled that down? Yep. David, he's a very naughty dog. Yeah, and uh, now, Mr. Tucker, the only thing that isn't clear, where is the dog? Well, that's it, like I've been telling you. If I could find the corner post of my porch rail, and I could find your dog, because he's on the other end of it. You mean he's gone, he's run away? Well, I uh, wouldn't exactly say that, Mrs. Norton. Just exactly what would you say, Mr. Tucker? Well, I, I would use another word than run. Uh, walk, maybe. Trudge, maybe, but... But not, but not, but not run. That corner post is a sight heavier than you'd think. But he's lost. Well, Mrs. Norton, I wouldn't go quite so far as to saying your dog is lost. Of course, he ain't here. But there's a heap of difference between his being not here and his being lost. But for all practical purposes. He ain't here. David, something terrible may have happened to him. Oh, Bluff's a pretty big dog, darling, and more than likely he'll be able to take care of himself. Oh. Uh, you haven't seen him since, Mr. Tucker? Nary hide nor hair of him. Delilah and me, we're... Well, well, Mr. Norton, I kind of wished it was me wasn't here instead of your dog. Oh, but uh, we're we're not blaming you, Mr. Tucker, don't... David, where will we start looking for Bluff? Well, let's see. Let's try to figure it out. The first place I'm going to look is home. Come along, Mrs. Brown, and uh, you hold on to your daughter. I don't want to lose her tonight. Hey, Bluff! Hey, Bluff! Come on, old boy! This is certainly a gloomy homecoming. Oh, where do you think he is? I don't know, darling. 
Well, I hoped he'd be here. I don't think anything serious could have happened to him. Oh, he, he could have got that chain caught in the brush somewhere and be trapped. Well, <clears throat> what's a little brush to bluff? Are you forgetting Mr. Tucker's chicken house, his apple tree in his front porch? Come on, you two. We'll open the door and get our things out of the car. And I tell you what. What? What do we do next? While you start dinner, mm. I'll get in the car and then I'll drive around the countryside and I'll well, look Well, you for might blood. get lost. Well, don't worry about me. Oh, oh, darling. David, what happened? What have you done? Have I you hurt am yourself? Killed. I am killed. You better killed. sit down or something. If I'd broken my ankle, I. Oh, I think I've wrenched it well, badly. Listen, sit down and let me Ouch. look at it. You now, might... watch out. I, I tripped over something right here in the front door. David, watch out. Yeah, that's no, all right. It's all right. Mm. It's the... Say, that looks like this. the post from Mr. Tucker's porch railing. You know what that means? Bluff is home. Or he has been. Anyway, it's a good sign. You know, he's a very intelligent dog. Certainly Telephone. Telephone. Telephone, David. Yes, that's the impression I got, too. Darn this key, I never knew it to fail when you're in a hurry. Oh, let me help you. Yeah. Hurry up, hurry up. Hello, David Norton speaking. Who? Oh, Mr. Tucker. He is? Good news. Bluff just turned up at Tucker's place. Then he's safe. And sound. And uh, I have some uh, news for you, Mr. Tucker. Yes, you remember that corner post from your porch rail, the one you haven't got? Well, in some unaccountable way, it is sitting on my front porch. Yes, uh, yes. uh, Well, I'll bring it back to you tomorrow. And look, Mr. Tucker. Bluff isn't tied to anything right now, is he? You took the chain off, so you're sure he couldn't get tied around anything. I wouldn't want any more damage caused to your place. All right. Thank you, Mr. Tucker. I'll get the car and bring him home. You'll do nothing of the kind. Well, Claudia, the prodigal pup returns. If you're like a lot of women who manage their own homes, you may have fallen into the habit of eating a hasty and not very appealing lunch. Here's a suggestion that will add considerably to your enjoyment of the noonday meal, and it doesn't involve a minute's preparation. Simply reach into the refrigerator for a bottle of ice-cold Coke. Add Coca-Cola to your sandwich or salad or dessert, and you'll find that you lunch refreshed. Well, Mr. King, that could have been a good deal worse, couldn't it? So Bluff turned up at last. Well, I certainly was relieved. And I'll be relieved when someone else turns up at the Norton farm on Monday. Oh, you mean Gertrude, the plumber's sister-in-law, uh, and the Norton's new maid. Will she stay with the Norton's, do you think, Mr. King? Oh, I really can't say, Mrs. Brown. Now, confidentially, Mr. King, and I promise not to breathe a word of this to anyone, is Gertrude really a good cook? Hmm, I'm sure I don't know, but I promise you I'll look in on Monday to find out. You'll find me looking in ahead of you, Mr. King. Well, then, good evening. Good evening, Mrs. Brown. And as I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These programs star Catherine Bard as Claudia and Paul Crabtree as David. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>